William Tremblay. Uh, I was born in Santa Monica, California, and uh, I went to several schools, uh, six junior colleges and three universities, including USC and UCLA and uh, University of Santa Clara. And wow. I, I uh, started in the aerospace business uh, by accident. Uh, I was going to school to become a geologist, but I had to to work at something at night because I needed classes in the daytime. So I went to work for Lockheed uh, when I was 19 years old in, in January of 1951. Um, when when you, when did you born? 2432. 2432. Alright. And what about the school you went, middle school and high school? Uh, middle school and high school were uh, in the the high school was in the San Fernando Valley, a typical valley kid, mm -hmm. and uh, I was fortunate in the sense that uh, I was three years ahead of my classmates, uh, so I graduated from high school when I was 16. By the time the Korean War broke out, what were you doing? You were in the high school? No, no, I had graduated from high school, and as a matter of fact, I, I, uh, uh, I just... I had been with Lockheed for a short time. Uh, uh, I'd been working in construction as a, as a youngster of uh, 18, as, from the time I was 16 until I was uh, 18, uh -huh. 19, 19 years old. Uh -huh. uh, I had started uh, with school uh, on a scholarship, but again, uh, sponsored by Standard Oil to become a geologist. In the what university? And that was in Taft College. Taft College? Yeah. Okay. And uh, turned out that I uh, wanted to return to the San Fernando Valley and uh, to my girlfriend. And uh, so we were married when I was 19 and she was 17. Wow. And uh, again, I, I started to, to work at Lockheed uh, so I could have a night class and go to school in the daytime. How did you end up working with the Lockheed Martin, please? No, that was easy. It was, it, I could get a job. That was Did you answer. apply for, by yourself? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. And, and what were you doing there in the beginning? In the beginning, yeah. uh, I was in the business of uh, uh, fabricating parts for aircraft, and then I, I went to the business of, of uh, assembly of aircraft. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently I had a certain amount of skill in that regard. My dad was in that business also. Wow. Did you know about the breakout of the Korean War? Very little, as most civilians in the United States knew very little about that, other than the fact that we didn't think we should be there. But uh, on the other end of it, we felt that we had to be in order to help people who were being oppressed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, philosophically, I was in favor of it, but uh, it turns out that uh, uh, as a newly married guy with a, with a pregnant wife... Exactly. Yeah, I... Uh, and working in a, in a essential industry, um, I wasn't really too anxious to go. Why? And uh, I tell it the, the story that, uh, uh, considering they weren't taking married people or or uh, people in, in uh, essential industry, uh, how come I got drafted? Anyway, mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so you were drafted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I was very fortunate in the sense that, that I, I got into a, an organization that was uh, intent on, on training people because at that time there were very few real active soldiers and so forth. And uh, it happened that uh, my commanding officer and, and the second officer, uh, somehow or other they decided that I, I would be useful to help them train other people, all mm -hmm. of whom were, were basically civilians in their mind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I was assigned uh, early on. Uh, oh, before that, uh, when were you drafted and where did you receive the military training? Uh, I was drafted in uh, 1952. Uh-huh. Right. And, and uh, basic training, as was true of a lot of kids in, at, at that time, uh, at Fort Ord in Northern California. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... Uh, as I say, the, the, uh, the company that I was assigned to was uh, uh, essentially a, a matter of basic training 
for people who were essentially civilians and knew nothing about being a soldier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, my commanding officers uh, uh, made me a temporary corporal immediately and made me part of the training group. Why do you think that they fit you in that category? I'm not really sure, but I'm glad. Because, uh, uh, again, I, I taught people to, to uh, fire the Garand rifle because I was an expert at 300 and 500 yards. And uh, because I, I had been a hunter and so forth as a kid. Mm. And uh, so uh, that was obviously something that I could teach people to do. And uh, again, at my uh, assigned uh, uh, temporary status as a corporal, uh, I went through the routine of teaching people to uh, understand commands and, and accept them. and. Uh, do all of the foolish things that you teach soldiers in the first place, having to do with marching and all that sort of nonsense. Yeah. But uh, as <clears throat> as time went on, uh, it turned out that uh, my wife blessed me with twins, mm. and uh, I, I had a sense that that something was was going on at home, and I and I told my my first sergeant that uh, I was I was going to go over the hill. If I couldn't get a pass, I was going to go over the hill. And he says, "Well, wait a minute." Uh, stand reveling tomorrow and uh, then go if you're going to go. So I did go and uh, I arrived back to intercept my dad uh, who was just coming back from the, from the Oceanside Hospital and uh, he said uh, uh, Kathy being, being my wife was having the baby. So we turned around and we went back to Oceanside and we arrived about 45 minutes after my twins were mm. born. and. Uh, I was thrilled with that, but of course I was uh, absent without leave. So I called my commanding officer and we had a little small talk and he said, son, do you have a, a pass? And I said, no, sir. He said, oh, and there was a little silence. Then he said, uh, can you get back by Tuesday? This is a very fine understanding officer. So yes, I got back by Tuesday and continued with my activity. But as time went on, I became increasingly concerned about the fact that my my little girls and my wife had to stay with my with my mother and dad, uh, and so I wasn't doing my job. I didn't think I was doing the right duty because I was wearing the uniform, but uh, my family was with somebody else. So it turned out that my body rebelled, and I had a, a I developed a bleeding ulcer, and at that point I was sent to Letterman Army Hospital in the. San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, as an ambulatory patient, uh, I was given a responsibility to go around to the various uh, wards, uh, the fellows that that were not uh, ambulatory, and show movies for them and so forth. And uh, uh, I had a, a Class A pass in San Francisco, so uh, that was that was pretty good duty, except for one thing, which changed my whole life. The guys that were coming back from the war, in the wards that I was calling on to show movies to, mm -hmm. were so terribly, terribly damaged. Uh, loss of limbs and uh, uh, injuries that uh, maimed them in one way or another, either uh, psychologically or physically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I persisted in that uh, capacity for some time, and actually I was released early in 1953, mm -hmm. and uh, went back to uh, to Lockheed uh, and was in the business of building airplanes, uh, again with the intent of being a, a geologist someday, mm -hmm. but I continued in the airplane building business for what turned out with Lockheed to be 13 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the latter part of that 13 years, uh, I was uh, most active with the uh, uh, Polaris Missile Program. Wow. And, and uh, uh, I was a program manager in several aspects of the Polaris Missile Program. And uh, I was uh, blessed in many regards. And the discipline that the Army taught me was, uh, was useful in that regard. There were things that I could bring to the business of building missiles that uh, those that had not had the experience in the Army uh, just didn't have that sense of, of need or, or, or importance. 
And uh, when I left Lockheed, uh, uh, after some 13 years, I left as a program manager to go to another company still in that same kind of business. Mm. And uh, to shorten a rather lengthy story, uh, my military service served me in a, in a wonderful way because when I got out, I got the full benefit of the of the schooling of the GI Bill. Yeah. And with my, my new family that we continued to add children, mm -hmm. uh, we ultimately made uh, five uh, beautiful little girls uh, in four years, and uh, no and we uh, uh, bought three different houses on the GI Bill, and. Uh, all in all, uh, uh, I have benefited mightily from my time in the service, but relative to the, the business of, of making war, I've been adamantly against the business of making war since spending all the time with those horribly maimed and, and damaged soldiers uh, that I met at uh, Letterman Army Hospital. Hmm. That's all you really need to know. So you were never been in Korean soil? Never been in Korean soil. Mm -hmm. And but I had the benefit of, of, again, being in service and serving something relative to the, the effort. Exactly. So you took care of the soldiers who returned from Korean War. Yes. Those who were wounded and you yes. were able to care them. Yes. And please explain, I know why you are designated as a Korean War veteran, but the audience doesn't know. So would you please explain why you've been... Uh, designated as Korean War veteran, even though you've never been in Korea? Well, <clears throat> the first thing, of course, was the fact that I was drafted. And uh, I went through the, the basic training and uh, was originally uh, uh, considered to, to go to the, uh, uh, the training for uh, uh, codes and that sort of thing in, in Monterey. But it turned out that when I was a freshman in college, I had had friends who were card-carrying communists and so they would not allow me to go into the the, uh, the business of uh, codes and that sort of thing, which I think is kind of narrow-minded, but that's another story. Suffice to say that uh, the the issue of seeing these other fellows who had not wanted to go to, to war and who came back so terribly da damaged, uh, that changed me for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. um. All those soldiers who were drafted and enlisted during the Korean War up to 1955, they've been designated as Korean War veterans. That's, That's right. why you got the benefits and GI Bills as Korean War veterans, and even though you've never been in Korea. That's right. Yeah. And my direct uh, contribution uh, in the business of training soldiers, uh, as I look at it in retrospect, I think that was a useful thing to do. But again, philosophically, I'm so opposed to to war as a result of seeing those terribly damaged men. Yeah, you. How much were you paid while you were in the <laughs> service? It's the soft side of the war. Yeah. You know the truth is I don't remember how much I was paid, but I remember how much my wife was paid. What do you mean? She was paid ninety-one dollars a month. What did she work for? She didn't work. It was. It was. Uh, she was my dependent. And uh, Uncle Sam paid her ninety-one dollars a month, which was supposed to support she and, and my twin daughters. In addition to your salary. Yes. Oh, that's nice. You know, well, as far as my salary was concerned, I gambled as most soldiers did, and I su supplemented my uh, my income with uh, gambling, of one kind or another. What do you mean supplemented? You lost the money. No, no, I didn't lose. You always earned it. I I was. Uh, Let's say the kindest thing I can say is that I was fortunate in that regard. GI Bill, what university did you go? Uh, USC was uh, notable among those. Uh huh. And of course, uh, both the USC and UCLA. I, I, I subsequently uh, uh, went back to those schools. Initially, I went to, uh, as a student or uh, just. Uh, auditing the classes, but uh, subsequently I came back as a lecturer, and I le have lectured at uh, you know, USC and UCLA uh, with honorarium in the business of uh, uh, assembling uh, structures, in, in particular aircraft and missiles. Wow. So please tell me about exactly what part that you worked for the missile uh, program in the Lockheed Martin. 
Well, there are a number of things that I can't talk about to this day, even though that was in the 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I was a program manager in, in uh, both test equipment and in uh, missile structures. And uh -huh. uh, um, apropos of that, uh, the biggest responsibility I had for that was uh, I had 400 engineers and, and uh, scientists who answered to me. Wow. What kind of uh, illness do you have and why you are here in the uh, veterans' home? No illness. I'm okay now. I'm just old. Oh. So you living here or...? I'm living here, yes. Oh, okay. Is that... That's another, that's another benefit of my, of my having been in service. What about your family? My family, uh, they're grown. They blessed me with uh, 15 grandchildren, 9 great-grandchildren, and 4 great-great-grandchildren. Wow. So, so uh, do they live around here? No, they, that's that's one of the reasons I'm here because I do have some that are close here, but I have uh, children in in uh, Oregon and Washington and Colorado and Arizona and uh, all over California. What about their attitude about Korean War? Are they interested in or they were interested in, in it uh, when they were growing up because Daddy talked to them about it. And we, we talked about the, the, the philosophy of, of war in general. And uh, uh, I believe in defending your country. I believe in uh, making the best weapons that, that can be made. I worked for 10 years with a company that did nothing but weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, to support soldiers, I'm, I'm absolutely in favor of it. But the business of, of war by itself, I'm opposed to it. Mm -hmm. Could you? Tell me how you think about what's happening in the Korean Peninsula right now. I think that it's it's criminal in the sense that that uh, the effort that's being put on the North, where the the people of North Korea, I think, have nothing to do with the, the uh, pressure that's being applied. Yeah, and uh, they themselves are suffering under the uh, the uh, current regime, if you will, mm -hmm. and. Uh, there, there is no benefit to the efforts that, that are being put to, to pressure them at all. They do, they do not benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And God forbid there should be a war as a result. Uh, again, I've seen the, the results of war. Yeah. And uh, You know what happened in South Korea after the war? Well, in general, yes. It, they, the, uh, uh, the people have basically uh, benefited. And of course, uh, we had still have a bunch of soldiers there, which is not very well known by most Americans, I think. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think that we've we've done as much as we can do without being aggressors ourselves. The, the objective of the United States, at, at least as I understand it, is to assist the people in, in their own activities and, and in their plans about themselves, not to make them into Americans. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, so I think the South has is, is got a good attitude and they're doing very well and the, the North is just tragic, mm -hmm. it's just tragic. Yeah. Hmm. And of course, uh, like many Americans, uh, I feel like I'd like to go in and beat up the guys that are beating you up, <laughs> but unfortunately mm -hmm. that doesn't work either. If if you don't if you don't believe that that's a mistake, then take a look at the at the Iraq and and, and so forth. That's has not worked out very well for some six thousand soldiers who've died. What is the quali qualification for Korean War veterans to be checked into the veterans' home? Um, honor, honorable discharge for one, <coughs> and uh, sixty-two years old for another. And uh, I think uh, I think also that it, it's a, a clean civilian record as well. In other words, we, we can't be criminals. And uh, I don't think that uh, my uh, <laughs> gambling with my fellows would be considered to be a criminal activity. <laughs> to be here uh, took about. Uh, I had been in the in the uh, Lancaster facility. And I was accepted there, and I'd been there for about a, roughly a year, year and a half. And uh, I applied here because I do have some family in this area. 
and uh, it took about a year to happen. So I've been involved in, in this kind of a program for about about two and a half years. You don't want to live with your family? No. Oh, why not? Because they they need to be able to uh, establish their own directions and to pursue them. And if they need help from Grandpa, give me a call because mm -hmm. I'll be here for you. Mm -hmm. So what is the life here? Do you drive around, go oh, yes. out, whatever yes, I, you want? Yes, I, I, I have complete freedom mm -hmm. because I have my own vehicle and of course I, I, I go places and do things. Mm -hmm. But uh, they make a, a real effort to keep us uh, interested and uh, to some degree entertained. Mm -hmm. But the difference between interest and entertained uh, is uh, pretty evident. Yeah. And there's some remarkably talented and experienced guys here, guys that are well into their 90s, uh, who are authors, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's wonderful that they are authors because uh, the life that they have uh, lived is, is so full of outstanding experiences. Uh, but uh, again, uh, the <coughs> probably uh, the issue of us being helped in, in uh, the medical fields with the VA and the things that the, that the, the VA offers in that regard. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, of course, housing and, and uh, the expression of, of uh, three hots and a cot, you know, mm -hmm. of course, we're taken care of in the, in the fundamentals of living. But uh, the most important aspect, I would say, is, is probably uh, the, the medical. Any other message that you want to leave about as you being Korean War veterans and the I'd, war? I'd say uh, if you're called on by your country, do it as best you can. And it has worked out very well for me, as, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the time that I was called to war, I didn't want to go. And I was blessed by virtue of having wonderful officers in, in the company that I was uh, assigned to. And uh, I like to think that I contributed something as a soldier. And uh, when I was in, in the process of being mustered out at the Letterman Army Hospital, uh, I learned so much about the, the, the terror of war. Mm -hmm. So many young men, my, my same age at the time, who were damaged for a lifetime. Yeah. Just with the physical aspect. And they had no philosophical issues as far as war was concerned. They simply knew that somehow or other they had to go back to civilian life without an arm or a leg or with otherwise damage. And uh, that is, is a terrible legacy. Uh, and like most, uh, well, I don't, uh, most is, is the wrong expression. Like many uh, people in my age bracket and the next two or three age brackets younger. Uh, the terror of war is something that's clear in my mind. And as I say, I, uh, in my checkered career, I worked 10 years doing uh, the business of design and manufacture of weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, uh, I finally decided to get out of that business because the weapons that they wanted me to work on were just too terrible, just too awful. Exactly, that, that's the point. It's the you know, destructive power of military industry complex. Well, we need it. It's a necessary oh, yeah, evil. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and that's yeah. that's the way I, I addressed it. Uh, things that blow up and, and uh, travel long distances to go beat up on somebody. Uh, yes, I had a lot to do with that over time, and uh, I like to think that I contributed positively in that regard. But uh, it's not likely that I would get involved again if I were asked, unless my country said, uh, we need your help, in which case I know I do it. What about the relationship between U.S. and Korea, South Korea? Do you think it's important? I think it's very important. I think that most Americans have no idea what it's about. And I think that it's worthwhile that they learn. Because it, what it has to happen is the Americans have to put, uh, put if not pressure, certainly knowledge uh, uh, on their uh, administrators and, and uh, Congressman, to uh, give the appropriate support. I mean, we, we can't, uh, today at least, uh, go out and send a couple of uh, unmanned vehicles over to 
with bombs and weapons and so forth against uh, uh, the North. Uh, that, that makes no sense at all. But uh, I think that, that Americans in general just go through their life rather smoothly, easily, without a real, real consciousness of what's going on in the world. Thank you very much.